Lens AI is having a moment right now, a mega massive kind of moment. Last time I looked at it, the app which dominated the US App Store crossed $8 million of net revenue. That was last week in my viral tweet. The total is already up to $25 million. Crazy. And that's net revenue, meaning after Google and Apple took their fee. So that's what Linza gets to keep. But that's not the story today. The story today is a little bit different. Demand for Linza AI expanded into demand for AI art apps, several of which climbed to the top of the US App Store, where the strand that I'm going to be talking about began. See, I started seeing AI art apps rise to the top of the US App Store within days of Lenza taking over. Some of it was pushed with Apple search ads, of course, but on its own, that wasn't enough to generate so much demand. How much demand, you might be asking? Well, according to our app intelligence, the five most popular similar apps, not including Lenza AI, made their way into 11 million devices since Lenza took off in late November. Wild! In the same period before AI art became hot, downloads for the top five, which include Wonder, Dawn, Prequel, which I talked about here, AI art and Voy saw just about a million downloads a week. So that's a massive, massive increase. And that's not just an ad fuel trend, in my opinion. Why? Because we can see growth in both the App Store and Google Play. Usually, ad fuel trends tend to play out on the App Store where there's more revenue to be made. I showed an example of that here. And I'll leave a link to that in the description in case you missed it. The numbers are just really interesting if you're a developer. Comparing the sum of downloads for the group before and after Lenza got popular, the App Store saw demand exploding by 1,256%. Google Play was a bit lower, growing just 759%, and adding 3.7 million estimated downloads. <laughs> just. I expect this to be a phase, especially as ChatGPT is another trend that's hard not to hear about these days. If you're a developer with a similar app, now is a great time to promote it. Are you doing anything if you're not? Drop a comment, let me know, and I'll give you some ideas because I think this is an amazing wave to ride. By the way, I'm Ariel from App Figures, and you're tuned into a new episode of This Week in Apps. I'm away from the studio again, so I hope you're enjoying this new background. Next. One of the biggest trends this year was the rise of Be Real, a silly, simple togetherness app. And I'm sure there's a better way to describe it, but that's how I describe it. Where friends share a single picture, the candid kind, once a day. The concept was really basic and there was no monetization in place. And that's it. I talked about Be Real a whole bunch of times because it was getting downloads, lots and lots and lots of downloads. So where's Be Real now? First, let's look at the history. Be Real launched all the way back in 2020. It got downloads before 2022, but not many. According to our estimates, Be Real saw about 1,000 downloads per week in January. It got popular at the end of March in Downloads started growing quickly. It peaked in October with 3.6 million downloads per week, according to our estimates. That's an increase of 359,900% in case you're into big numbers. At the same time, Be Real raised a $60 million round of funding. Downloads started sloping down almost immediately after the new teen sensation switched from Be Real to Gas, which isn't really competing on features, but rather on target audience. And by mid-December, Be Real's weekly downloads were down more than 50% to just 1.4 million. Still high, but 1.4 million. So where's Be Real going? Using history as a template, the answer is not very far. See, Clubhouse followed almost the exact same path just a year earlier. Both apps exploded in popularity, raised a bunch of money while not focusing on monetization, and lost their popularity almost immediately as people moved on. But there is a positive. Clubhouse introduced the world to communal podcasting, another term that there's probably a better replacement for, but that's how I see it. And that feature made its way into most social platforms. Be Real did something similar. On-command picture taking is now a feature in most competing apps and even sparked a whole separate app for TikTok, which I showed off here. I hope Be Real doesn't disappear and grows beyond the feature and also develops a monetization strategy. We know it's possible because Gas did it. If you like what you're hearing so far and you like the numbers or you just like the piano, make sure to take a second and give the episode a like. This piano is only gonna star in this one episode for now at least. Now, another big trend that happened this year is Wordle. Remember that? It was a word game that took off in late December of 2021 and turned everyone's Twitter feed into a scorecard. That Wordle was a website though. 
A bunch of clones rolled out on the App Store but got kicked out just as fast, except for one. There was an app with the same name in the App Store already that was a totally different game by someone who made it in 2016, a solo dev who made it in 2016. But that app quickly transformed into a Wordle clone, and because it was there before, it was the only clone that was allowed in the App Store, so obviously it had an advantage, and it did get success. The web Wordle was acquired by the New York Times, and its popularity kind of disappeared to my Twitter feed almost instantly, but the mobile game is still getting downloads. How many? Let's have a look at the numbers. In the before days, when the solo developer who made the game for fun back in 2016 just headed on the App Store and didn't do anything to ride the wave, the game was grown organically fairly quickly just because of the name, just because of the name. It looked very different and was very old, so people didn't stick around. In numbers, we estimate weekly downloads rose to more than a million from virtually none in under a month. That's with no changes. They remained high, and that's when the game changed to become a Wordle clone. Great thinking on the developer's behalf. Now, by April, the game peaked again, which led to its acquisition by Ad Network Applevin's Game Studio. But it's at that point that downloads sloped down a ton and would never recover. Our estimates show weekly downloads averaging 300,000 fairly consistently since. Why? And this is why I bring this up. I expect it's a combination of the web game being acquired by the New York Times and being pushed into its mobile app and also app tracking transparency making it much harder to get in front of people, especially when you're trying to push a known brand. Now, it's still seeing quite a few downloads, so I wouldn't call this acquisition a total fail, but I expect to see a push coming from Lion Games this holiday season. So we can see downloads sloping up over the last few weeks and considering the app is owned by an ad network, I fully suspect that slope is someone turning a knob a little bit up, just one notch. I expect to be seeing more of it in the near future. Now, while we're on trends, we can't not talk about Peloton, the app that starred in the first ever This Week in Apps newsletter back when it wasn't even a podcast. While Peloton's hardware business ran into trouble recently, its investment in digital fitness content is growing rather nicely. Based on our estimates, it looks like Peloton's content will earn the most ever in 2022. See. When Peloton first moved into digital content via subscription, I knew something great could happen. Pre-pandemic, it was Peloton's IRL setup that made the company so popular, in addition to its bikes. Having that at home for a few bucks a month sounds like a no-brainer, and indeed it wasn't. Peloton's mobile app earned $13.3 million of net revenue in 2020, according to our estimates. 2021 was another good year for the bike maker, which semi-expanded into my favorite workout equipment, rowers and net revenue grew to $33.7 million. Now, which apps do you use for working out? Let me know in the comments, I'm curious. 2022 isn't over yet, but in the first 11 months of the year, Peloton's mobile net revenue is already sitting at $59.5 million, and I see it crossing 60 easy before the end of the year. So this trend is exploding, exploding. Now. One question that I see come up often, especially in the context of Peloton, is how to reconcile mobile revenue with revenue reported by public companies like Peloton. The answer is it really depends. In this case, in-app purchases are one of a few channels Peloton calls digital products. So it's a subset. Keep that in mind if you're trying to do this sort of valuation or if you're trying to follow the trends. Now, back to the data. The growth is a combination of new subscribers, pricing tweaks, meaning price increases, and a focus on retention, which is a double-edged sword for fitness apps for most people. While mobile revenue is growing, bike sales aren't, and considering the cost, I'm not at all surprised. This is pure speculation, but I think we will see Peloton splitting its digital business and its physical hardware business in the future, because between bike sales declining and subscription content taking off, it's really the right thing to do for investors. Once they reach scale, of course, and I'll follow that. Speaking of big years, another app that got a boost during COVID lockdowns is also having an amazing 2022, and that app is the maybe handmade good marketplace, Etsy. If you've been using Etsy for long enough, you know why I say maybe. Source of goods aside, though, Etsy's downloads have grown a ton since 2020. The first bump came as 20,000 sellers started selling handmade masks week into lockdowns. It then got into vintage shoes by acquiring Depop a year later, leading to weekly downloads more than doubling year over year. As an Etsy user, I'm happy to report 2022 is going to be even bigger. I went all the way back to 2018 to see where downloads started. 
or estimates show weekly downloads in early 2018 average about 100,000. Now, if you're thinking that's much lower than Amazon, keep in mind that the market for handmade goods isn't really comparable to standard e-commerce. Let's continue. Downloads remained similar for two whole years or until lockdown started. That's when growth really, really started. Etsy ended 2020 with 300,000 weekly downloads, up 3x. In 2021, with 400,000 downloads, according to our estimates, which is super impressive considering nothing really changed on the platform throughout. 2022 hockey sticked, a made-up word to describe a crazy change in speed of growth. And one of the few instances where the chart actually looks like a hockey stick if you're seeing it on your screen. Etsy ended November with a million downloads in a single week, its biggest week of downloads ever. Surely thanks to more in-person holiday celebrations and the desire to give something that didn't come from Amazon or Timo. But also a strong reminder of how much shopping has moved from the web to apps and how important discovery is on the App Store and Google Play. The same exact reason why Timu is spending heavily on Apple search ads right now. I expect to see more marketplaces grow in 2023, both because there is more interest in shopping by phone, but also because of how easy it is to get in front of a big audience with a new idea. If you run one of those, make sure you're investing in organic discovery, which is app store optimization. It takes a while to build, but it's really worth it in the long term. And if you're not sure where to start, and if you're not sure where to start, watch this video where I share everything I learned about app store optimization in 2022. There are a bunch of good tips there to help you get started. I'll see you next week back in the studio.